Welcome to Rams Iconic, presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. I'm DeMarco Farr, and this is the podcast where we get to catch up with some of the greatest players in Rams franchise history. Our next guest played 11 seasons with the Rams. Over those 11 seasons, I love this, 593 catches, nearly 10,000 yards. He's a three-time Pro Bowler. Only guys named Holt and Bruce have more receptions and receiving yards in Rams franchise history. Please welcome to Rams Iconic, the pride of Fresno, former Ram wide receiver Henry Ellard. What is up, man? Hey, hey, I'm just enjoying Texas. It's a little hot, I, but I'm enjoying it. Hey, well, you're hot. See, look at you. You don't <laughs> age. You, 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 you look the same as when you were a player. I, I tell you what, I think that's thank God to my, for my mother. She passed her genes on to us, and we've been carrying that on for sure. That's great blood, right? I like yeah, it. Great genes. No doubt. Yeah. So uh, this is crazy. So 1983, you and Eric Dickerson come to L.A. at the same time. Right. What was that like when you guys first landed in Los Angeles as teammates? I'll tell you what, you know, impressive. You know, because, I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about Eric at the time, being at SMU and me being in Fresno. But then when I started to do a little research, I was just like, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it, was, it was a humbling experience, i tell you that much. What, coming to L.A. or being with Eric? Yeah, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> See, we're in the AD era, and the AD era, the Aaron Donald era is fun, but the ED era must have been Jerry Curl fun, man. Oh, hey, we both came in with the Jerry Curl. We sure did. It you had so a curl, too? Because... I didn't know you had a curl. No, yeah. no, no. Wait yes, a minute. Between me, Eric, and Preston Denard, we had it covered. Oh, my God. How much did you spend on Activator? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I had to keep it, had to keep it moist. I, I like more. it. So, uh, sure and burn your eyes on game day. I know all about it. <laughs> yeah, the funny part about that is that you say that. Yeah. I was a punt returner, of course. And yeah. one game I was out there warming up. Sure enough, I went to catch a punt. Sure enough, I think it dripped in, it dripped in my eye. And I had to t- put a headband on from that point on to make sure that never happened again. See, that white streak. I know what that is. It gets in your <laughs> eyes. You can't see. <laughs> I know what that is. Uh, speaking of punt return, man, you made the Pro Bowl – in your second year as a putt returner. I mean. Yeah, I knew the blessing. I mean, um, I did it in high school, did a little bit in college, not a whole lot, but then once I got to the NFL, when you have Eric Dickerson in the backfield, you got to find a way to get your hands on the ball because it wasn't going to be throwing passes since we were handing the ball off so much. So, you know, talking to Gil Haskell, the special team coach, I said, Coach, how can I, you know, on a special team, say, okay, let's do kickoff return, let's do punt return. And that's how I got back into the uh, into the special teams, especially the punt returning. So you went and asked them to return? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, he known I had a history with it, so we kind of talked about it. Okay, and so this was my way to get on the field because it was more of a ground-and-pound type offense. Yeah, I didn't mind blocking for Eric because i got to tell you what, he made my job easy. But to, to get my hands on the ball, at that time, we were probably catching 30, 40 balls a year. Yeah. So I just wanted to find other ways to get my hands on the ball to help out. What makes a good punt returner? Because I think I'd be a great punt returner because I'm easily startled. I am. <laughs> well, no, no, that's not a good thing, man. That's not a good that's, thing? No, 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 no. I was a daredevil growing up. My Evil Knievel was one of my idols as a kid. So that was right up my alley, you know, to take that chance of, you know, catching the ball and, and, and making people miss and things like that. So, and of course, when you got five older brothers, you get a lot of practice at that of running and getting chased by people. So yeah. it was a natural fit for me. So punt returning was like you jumping over buses or jumping over over, canyons. uh, I was jumping over ditches on a bike compared (laughs) to jumping over buses on a motorcycle. Wow, man. So I was going to ask you that. So as a punt returner, I mean, when the ball leaves his foot, you you track the ball only or do you look down to see who's coming at you? I'll I'll, I'll check the flight of the ball and the pointer tell me where the ball is going. And then my eyes come back down and look at the outside guys and see if they got free releases. That tells me the timing that I have to catch the ball and, of course, the flight of the ball if I'm going to have time to catch it and, and get a chance to return it. So how do you know – Do you how do you remember which way the the return is going after all that? <laughs> well, you know, we set it up. We talk about it. You know, and sometimes depending on the flight of the ball, you know, you, you stay with the cores with right, left, right, you know, left or up the middle. It just all depends. So you're with the Rams, they're running the football, and they had to, like you said, it's smart because they had Eric Dickerson, and they had a great offensive line and a great defense and whatnot. Yes. Uh, what year did you lead the league in receiving? That was 88? 88. 88, 88. 80, uh, yeah, 88 was that year. 
okay, did they just realize we got Henry Ellard at receiver or <laughs> – like, no. what changed? Uh, the, the, the offense changed. We brought in Ernie Zampezi from San Diego. Ah, okay. And it's so funny because my first conversation with him, of course, up until that point, I may have caught 50 balls in one year. He came up to me and said, Henry, you know, in this offense, you can catch 70, 80 balls. And I looked at him. I think, uh, Coach, I know you're good, but I don't, I don't know about all that. And sure enough, I caught 86 balls that first year he was there. So I just he just liked to throw the football. I mean that he just changed with the with the times. The era was changing. Yeah, I mean, like I say, once we traded Eric away, we we like okay, yeah. where do we go from here? And then you know we we brought in Jim Everett coming in, and then all of a sudden things just started. And of course, we had uh, Flipper Anderson and Aaron Cox, so we had the weapons. We just had to put them to use. Big oak tree quarterback and, and a bunch of receivers <laughs> just throwing the football. I saw this, and uh, it, I I told the guys this has to be a typo. So. You, against Indianapolis, you had 12 catches for 230 yards and three touchdowns? Who were you playing, Joe Bag of Donuts? The you know, <laughs> funny part about that is that was Eric's first game back in uh, Anaheim Stadium. And I kind of felt bad to tell the truth. You know, he was coming in making his debut against us. But, yeah, just things just clicked for us, and, and we had fun. What did you feel bad about? It was Eric, I mean, Eric coming back home, you know, after being traded and things, you know, you know, he had a decent game, though. Know, that, that's for sure. But I just, yeah. I don't know. I just didn't want to show off. I didn't mean to show off in front of my, my buddy. What, what, wait a minute now. Come on now. Come on now. 230 yards. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. That had to be on purpose. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't call the play. I just made the play. Wow. 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 You know, uh, we've been doing this show for a couple of years now, and this is funny. This is the first guest. You're the first guest I've ever had that I actually played against. When you were in Washington, I played you three years, 95, oh. 96, and 97. Okay. And I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like, wow, this dude has been playing that long that I actually played with him, and now he's a Rams icon at the same time. This is amazing. <laughs> We've made history today. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It, it was a blessing. It really was. North Turner gave me an opportunity to continue my career when – the Rams guy thought thought I was over the hill at that point in time, so it, it was fun, especially the last game of the year in '94 when I had a chance to come back to Anaheim Stadium and play that last game in Anaheim Stadium. That's oh, that was uh, that was a I was out for that game. I remember that. That was our goodbye to L.A. Yeah, yeah. that was a trip. Yeah, day, day before Christmas, and I tell you what, the script couldn't have been written any better because my wife we still had a home in California in L.A., so my wife flew home early took all our stuff, and I told Noel, I said, look, since we're going out there the day before Christmas, I'm going to just stay. And sure enough, after the game, my wife drove to the stadium. I jumped in the car, and I, I drove, we drove home in, uh, in Orange County. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't write a better script than that. Yeah, see, we just missed each other twice. Do you know this? So you left the Rams in 93. I came in in 94. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so, so your one. teammates – were my teammates. Flipper yeah. Anderson was my vet. Yes. A guy that you taught about yes. this game was teaching me about this game. <laughs> so we got we had a lot of the same teammates. And then when you came back to coach in St. Louis, I had just retired and you got there in 2001. Right, exactly. Yeah. Sure enough. Yeah. It's crazy. And that's it's a small world. Small world. And you're, you're coaching Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt, the other guys that have as many catches <laughs> and yards in a Rams uniform as you have. That's got to be – an honor and weird at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that was a blessing. It, it really was. You know, the first NFL experience as a coach to walk into a room and see an Isaac Booth, a Tory Holt, a Ricky Pro, a Isaac King. I couldn't ask for an easier job than that. Because, I mean, they took a lot of pride in what they did and they, they went to work. See, they, they told me, see, Isaac Bruce, right? But he's my favorite teammate by far. Uh, one of the best players I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Orlando Pace is up there. Marshall Fogg, definitely. Jackie Slater for his longevity. But Isaac Bruce was special, and yeah. he never broke character. I've no. only seen him break character twice. Once going into the Hall of Fame when he saw his childhood idol, Dan Marino. Yeah. Isaac turned into a kid. The mm -hmm. other time was with you when Isaac said, I'm the other 80. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what? He <laughs> refers to you as the 80. Yeah. That is a big deal to me, man. Yeah, and, that, and that's Isaac Bruce. That, that's Isaac Bruce. And I'm, I'm, you know, just fortunate to yeah, be part of his life and, and get a chance to coach that young man. How do you help them? How do you help Hall of Famers get better? I mean, it's just all about the game. Yeah. 
And no, and it's, it's neat in, in the room because it's like a veteran player talking to the younger guy. We, we're bouncing ideas off each other's head. Okay, what do you see here? What would you do here? And this, this is like this based on how these guys are playing us and, and things like that. So it was, it was neat to be in a room with, with these guys and just talking to them. It's almost like we're talking to the group of wide receivers, how we can get better, doing the details. That's really what it came down to. So it's like teammates, except you're not playing on right. game day. That's the only yeah. difference. That's special. That's special. So, I mean, going back to the start, um, you're in a ground offense, a running offense, <laughs> and then you take off in the late 80s, and you have a Hall of Fame caliber career. I mean, do you still think about the Hall of Fame you coached a couple of guys. You know a lot of Hall of Famers. I mean, yeah. you're of that same ilk. Do you still think about the Hall of Fame? I know. I, I, I try not to. You know, and I hate the time of the year when it comes around because everybody starts talking and bringing it up. You know, I'm always blessed to play the game not only a couple of years but 16 years. So I have no complaints. If it happens, it's meant to happen. If not, you know, like I say, I, I was blessed. Man, I mean, what do you find more rewarding, playing or coaching somebody? Like playing and winning uh, or coaching uh, put, somebody, making co- them better? <laughs> the coaching part was hard for me because I felt helpless. I'm not out there being able to control things. Um, but, of course, when you got guys like I, Victoria and, and Ricky and, and the other kids, they take care of their business. But it was still hard for me the first year or so to get used to that. You know, hoping they, you know, they trust what you tell them and then sure enough they carried it out to, um, from one step to the next. But being on the field as a player, you can control things. You know, as a coach, you can't. You got to rely on your guys to, to prepare and hopefully do with the things you talked about. And, and pray they do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so every show we do on Rams Iconic, we do this where we call it My Favorite Play. Okay. Do you have a favorite play as a Ram? Something you can remember? You have to describe it. Tell me about it. Who, were, who was covering you? What happened? Uh, it was as a punt, punt returner against the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans where we, it, we were fighting for a playoff spot and we had to win that game. So sure enough, the guy kicks the ball um, off to my left side. I kind of slid over, caught it, pushed up field, moved a little bit to the right, uh, left, and all of a sudden there was a, a wall. And I just went through the wall. And I ran the, uh, the punter and ended up scoring a touchdown. We ended up winning that game and sure enough getting into the playoff. Wow. Wow. Running through the wall, just running through the smoke. Yeah, that's it. Not- <laughs> just following the trail. Wow. Wow, wow. And something else I didn't know. You were a triple jumper? Yes. What? I enjoyed track with another part of my guy. Kept me in shape in the offseason. I was a jumper, long jumper, high jumper, triple jumper. And almost made the Olympics or went to the trials? I went to the trials. And that was something, because uh, I think it was in 92 when Magic Johnson and the basketball team, they, became, they gave us the eligibility. And a perfect example is like Ron Brown came out the same year I did, 83. Woo, yeah. But got, was, Cle- was drafted by Cleveland Brown. He decided to sit out because of the 84 Olympics because he was a professional athlete. So they wouldn't let us compete back then. But football was my first love. So I was like, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to wow. football and play the game. But Ron sat out, got the gold medal, of course, set the world record in the four by one. I went on and played and, and, uh, so I was ineligible up until 92 when I read about the uh, Dream Team becoming eligible. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm, I was going into, I think, my 10th year in the league. I said, I'm going to train uh, for football, but I'm going to do a little bit of track on the side just to see what happens. Because it's a dream of mine to be able to go to the Olympic trials. And sure enough, I qualified for the Olympic trials jumping uh, 54 feet. After 10 years in the NFL – after yeah. 10 years in the NFL, <laughs> I'll just do a little track on the side and you go to the trials. <laughs> Come on, Henry. <laughs> Come on, man. Wow. See, this is what reminds, like, Isaac, are you, of, like, you and Isaac are the same guy. You guys are so humble. So yeah. humble. Do you know how special you are as a, as a player? I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I'm just blessed. Like I said, I was, I was just blessed, you know, to, uh, to have that opportunity. And I'm a mom, I was a mama boy, and I wanted to always please my mom. I heard that. Man, Henry, this has been special, man. Thank you for coming on the show. This has been great. Great to catch up with you. Thank you for having me. That's a wrap on this episode of Rams Iconic, presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with the iconic wide receiver, Henry Ellard. I'm DeMarco Farr, and we'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.